uh, this talk is, uh, is named Narana Java Library for Transaction Processing. I am Andra Chalopka. I work from for Red Hat uh, in uh, uh, particular in Narana team working with uh, with this with this library. Uh, goal uh, for this presentation is to provide some overview of the Narana capabilities uh, to talk about uh, the modules that uh, Narana ha provides for the developers and I'll give you uh, some idea how to use them. Just brief one because there are uh, like uh, several of them and expecting uh, in uh, case of interest, you will check the, the code yourself or to talk uh, uh, with, with, with us, with developers uh, on the forums. At the start, I will talk. I will ch talk about some basic uh, basic terms to to understand the context that I will be using. So, transaction a transaction is uh, a unit of work. It's a uh, some something that uh, could be split to several steps. But uh, we we assume that all those steps will be done as a one unit, and this is what the transaction manager or library. Uh, make uh, working that it makes trans that manages the transaction transactions and every steps inside of the transaction to be taken and as a single unit. Uh, the third term uh, which I will mention is uh, transaction model. Model maybe it's not the uh, precisely technical correct, but it's something that 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 that's a reason why you would would like to. Uh, Use the transaction manager. It's a uh, it's a way uh, that the processing guarantees uh, what will happen when you access your data in in the unit in that work, unit of work, uh, which is uh, which is uh, termed as a transaction. So, and with all of this, we have here the transaction manager, the implementation uh, which manages the transactions. And that's a Narana library, uh, which consists of, with, uh, with, uh, with consists of several modules with different approaches of the transaction processing. And here, uh, the Narana is uh, is integrated with uh, several uh, several uh, application runtimes to be easy easy to use it. And you can check check it. Now I will go through the journey of uh, World of Narayana, uh, how I named it, as um, I, I am a fan of the uh, RPGs, uh, the pen and paper, pen, pen and paper uh, in particular. I, I will take with, uh, with me these guys on that journey. Hopefully, they will give you some nice context uh, of how the transaction processing works. Don't worry, I will be quite a lot talking about the code but there will be some some uh, help with him to to show what uh, I'm talking uh, later so here is a like a, some head of the band uh, the transaction manager which manages some services some tasks that compound the transaction the thieves uses his tools for finishing his works, various works is different, and as well needs some tools. And all of that uh, needs to be uh, cooperated for the for the outcome would be would be would be correct. So and yeah, let's say that these guys have uh, a work to steal a gem uh, from a dragon. And uh, here uh, here is the here is the point. They need to somehow cooperate. To, to finish uh, finish their work, uh, there is as in other uh, as in other worlds uh, we have uh, uh, we have some rules that that uh, that pays in that world. Uh, in other fantasy worlds, we can find the magic or dragons. Here we have these four guarantees that uh, we can we we know. Uh, that's that's uh, transaction processing guarantees for us. I will go through them quickly, uh, just to to for you to understand what is these capabilities, what the transaction manager provides. If you would in Irana, it would be for would be good for when you will using it. 
So first is atomicity or another term is named as abortability. It's a way how to get back to the at the starting point when at the starting point when we when I take this um, example of the stealing a gem, uh, so that if the dragon reveals the thief, then he has a chance to load his kind of game back and return back at the top of the start and try his uh, his try uh, he tries his uh, task once again. This is what what uh, automatic says. And we have consistency. That meaning gem can't be can't be placed on several places uh, at once or uh, multiplied. Uh, and just it's once there uh, that uh, I hidden under the dragon's uh, body. So then in isolation makes a uh, uh, guarantee that uh, if multiple multiple uh, parties tries to uh, steal the gem, there will be just once who will win and will get it. And with the durability, um, we know that uh, everything will be um, per time, will be durable after the, the action finishes. For example, if the uh, if, even if the thief would die after it, still the gem will be uh, out of possession possession of the of the dragon. Yeah, and these are the world, the all the transaction modules that Narana provides, and that I will uh, briefly talk about. I will start about uh, JTS transaction transactions. If you don't mind, sorry, I will just check uh, how is, if there isn't anything bad with my, uh, uh, yeah, that seems that everything's hopefully working. Uh, so GTS transaction is uh, kind of the old concept, uh, but it's still, still a good base for the transaction processing it is uh, it is a uh, standard which comes uh, from the iop messages and uh, go in an orb orb world where the services talks uh, with over over the over the net and uh, work as objects uh, R rpc rpc calls objects remote rpc calls from service to service sorry uh, on top of that, uh, ORP, ORP uh, processing is uh, created the standard for transaction processing, and on which is OTS. And on top of that is JTS, which is uh, uh, standard how to bound these processing to Java. This is as well integrated then later with uh, Java EE standards and available in application servers, for example, in Wildfly. I when I take an example here, um, I will uh, with this. I I would like just uh, uh, show then a, a little bit code to for you can see uh, what I'm showing. This there is, is this kind of the the the, the, the picture uh, where uh, I'm uh, where you can see that there is different services, different uh, processes, different JVMs or uh, different processes on different machines. Each of them uh, is ORP service uh, communicating over the net with, uh, with via messages. The, the main point is naming service, where the services may be connected, transaction manager or the, the service of business work. And then uh, the service does some, some work and is managed, managed by transaction manager to finish uh, in the transactional manner. If I, I'm now showing you a code that that here is the this service, this thief service, which uh, needs for first some initialization of the R properties. Uh, you need to know where is the uh, naming server. Uh, set some setup. This is again. This is not about to show you how the things exactly should be done. Just uh, I would like to. I'll show you some feeling about what needs to be done or how to how this code working at that at that particular model works. And here, here, here in the comment method uh, is the processing where the um, 
get we are getting the the uh, control to to have some the link to the transaction manager we have a uh, 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 resources that here I have just hand coded directly here to print any, something to the uh, console log, but there could be anything like a database connection or something else. And these two services are then registered as a resource to the to the transaction manager and terminated at, at the end of all work is done uh, by committing and the termination service transaction manager finishes all the work uh, in the in the transactional manner over those um, over those uh, resources. When when as I the the uh, each service may call the other service and propagate transaction context from one one service to the other to to the other to other and then uh, consider it as a uh, work as a unit of work that compound the whole transaction as single single unit of work. Then for for from ORP spec there is needs to be defined this EDL uh, uh, EDL interface which is then transferred to the Java interface. Uh, so this way then uh, automatically the transaction context could be propagated from service to service something that uh, you will you would need to work with it's uh, like all the ways kind of but i would just mention that this uh, edl stuff is uh, like normal in, in current days as well even so to summarize the gts is like orp orp um orp transactional framework uh, uh, in at least from the from the perspective of the Narana uh, um, implementation uh, uses IOP messages to communicate where the services communicates over that with each other these that code that I show shown you that was like the a little bit deep dive to the uh, ARP and JTS processing if you would be using um, uh, integrate when, when it's when, when this is integrated with uh, application service for example as uh, EJB remote calls then these uh, any of these registration and stuff uh, is done like in the in the background by application server that uh, even that's quite uh, like uh, 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 capable this is like of kind of considered an old ways because working with or IOP and all these stuff is uh, not uh, easy, easy in all, all aspects. The next, uh, next module that I will, will mention is uh, JTEA transactions, which is uh, in fact, uh, in fact, it's an API uh, uh, on top of the, uh, for the, for Java to work with the transaction. It works with, uh, with XA resources based on the standard. Uh, Two-phase commit is used to uh, manage the, uh, the 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 participants. All that is well integrated to many runtimes and transparently used by developers. Even they would know that there is uh, in the background any uh, any any of these uh, standards or APIs. And the thing that I will be showing here is uh, here. Um, like application runtime, in my case, uh, Corcus uh, integrated with the CDI where uh, a component uh, accesses some database. Uh, so I will take, uh, here is the, there, here is the method, which is, uh, uh, which is annotated with the transactional, which makes from this from this map that in the in the background the application runtime ma maintains the transaction for me that's it started or taken from uh, from some some other call and then uh, because of it i can work with the database here i am using uh, orm or J or, uh, jpa um, entity persisting it and at the end of the method the transaction is committed uh, this is the integration with cdi uh, i can touch directly the J JTA API with uh, some calls. For example, here I, I have two calls just to, to show you where I can 
you, where I can register synchronization, which is some uh, callbacks, which will be uh, called uh, at the time when transaction is finished. This could be as well done uh, with uh, CDA, CDI annotations, but uh, as I, I wanted to just like tell you about or show you there are some APIs that could be used directly. This is uh, one of them. Or I can uh, say that some resource should be directly enlisted to the transaction processing. This call will be done uh, for me by application runtime uh, for the database. The database resource here I have uh, kind of the just uh, handwritten XA resource again the uh, that that is then used as uh, via via uh, is used by transaction manager to inform about the end of the transaction. So, but from the perspective of a standard user, this is just about uh, a few annotations and uh, all that's done uh, transparently. Uh, so, in uh, GTA transaction, there's some API which is based uh, on XA transaction and two-phase commit protocol to finish the, the transaction is uh, transparent to, to most of the developers and because of that they will use well integrated. Next, next point uh, is the software transaction memory, uh, which is uh, uh, like a little bit different from what I was talking about uh, until now, because uh, until now I was uh, I was showing some data sources to be to be work with the databases, persisting some stuff. Here is uh, about the uh, about the memory uh, synchronization uh, of of a shared resource. Uh, here I, if I, when I have here the three thieves trying to get the uh, lock picking tools, I would, I would be uh, understanding them now as a thread, which are, uh, which are trying to get one shared uh, resource. For example, if I would have he, the, he, here these uh, variables uh, x, y, z, z, then. I can I can synchronize them uh, if they will be accessed by three threads uh, par in parallel. That's fine. It will be working. Just maybe it could not be fully optimal in way that sorry that um, not all those three threads would be um, would be touching the the all the shared resources maybe. There could be when when running uh, just the first and second thread uh, will be fine to to leave them working in parallel without synchronize, synchronizing them because they are using the Z uh, just for the reading. With that, we can apply kind of the software transaction memory atomic block, which would be not pessimistically locking those uh, shared resources, but uh, like tracking what's happening with them and just uh, uh, just uh, just take take the action when the uh, when the mutual exclusion on that particular uh, resource is really needed. So this is uh, this is what the what this idea. Um, um, uh, with with the transaction memory, where we we where the thread would be taking into will be um, storing information about the uh, what are the what are the shared resources that they are using in which way if, if that used and if that's accessed from other thread, they can compare if uh, there is really interleaf between them and then take an action. This is the kind of the optimistic locking instead of pessimistic locking as a synchronized block does. Here is reacting after the uh, after that uh, interleaf happens. For this being uh, possible, there is a, a handle, not direct access to the memory. This handle is kind of that, that uh, proxy, which, uh, uh, which works with the uh, Properties and we are not touching directly the, the the memory and for from for Narayana there is this uh, this approach uh, yeah we have the Narayana provides again the annotation 
that uh, I can say uh, what is this what is this shared shared um, property that's action number and say the the for the for the method uh, what is what is the lock what is this uh, what is the property that should be guaranteed on calling that that method then as said uh, I can't directly ac access the 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 property di directly the the action number so uh, I need some proxy this is uh, this is what I need to, to do to create a proxy and then in the resource I am getting the proxy and doing the action uh, with with that in hand and if there will be some more parallel execution then uh, the processing of software transaction memory uh, 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 it guarantees me that there will be a set and an atomic. So the software transaction memory is uh, like optimistic locking approach uh, to for in VM in volume processing to for the mutual mutual exclusion of the shared resource. Now, uh, long running actions. This is an, uh, uh, like the um, the approach for uh, for using transaction in um, distributed systems it's uh, about like to, to create a microservice uh, design where microservices uh, talks each other to each other via HTTP calls and this the LRA is a specification or proposal uh, for micro profile uh the where where it's integrated with, with jux rs and uh processes the transaction uh, handling in a little bit different way than until now that we were talking about sit transactions but here we use the saga pattern which is which uh, means that some of the responsibility for finishing of transaction is put to the service itself but on the other hand, uh, we are gaining the loosely coupling of the uh, processing because until now there the the asset until now that we are talking about asset transaction, there is a data access uh, usually usually requires some logs uh, and that data sources, which may uh, cause the some slowing down the other services which which are. Uh, processing to to the same data source what is me what what this means is that uh transaction manager is not not managing directly the the data sources but uh, uh the the service creates the callbacks for compete or compensate which are uh guaranteed to be called at the end of the transaction uh so again here our party talk to get to cooperate on some action uh, transaction manager is trying to to say when the action should uh, is is successful or not and uh, call back to the services in the code uh, in the code uh, again this is uh, about the annotations similar to what uh, We've seen in transactional annotation for JTA, for LRA, it is the LRA annotation when ensures then when uh, the endpoint, the rest endpoint is called, then the uh, this this um, service is uh, registered to to the transaction manager, and it's start to be part of this unit of work. Uh, after this business process is uh, successfully proceeded, and if all other participants in that LRA uh, is successful, the transaction manager then calls back to the to the defined defined endpoints, uh, either compete or compensate in case of failure, and it's up to to the service to say what will do with that um, with that uh, with that competition callback and that's uh, that's the responsibility of the uh, LRA uh, transaction manager LRA coordinators just to 
uh, ensuring the callbacks are called and that that it's called until the successful uh, as until until the successful agreed on that that the callbacks was proceeded on the service side. So uh, now the summary is that uh, these are the um, annotations uh, used for the uh, REST-based processing. There is used a saga pattern for that. And uh, this business logic is uh, more, more responsibility for closing or for managing the, for finishing the transaction itself. And the services communicate over HTTP. I would highly recommend you, if you, if you are interested uh, in this, I would highly recommend you a session that will be on Saturday. It's named a different flavors of the distributed transaction. And my colleague Martin Stefanko will talk about all the details about the microservices and the transactions and distributed uh, systems and uh, Saga pattern, and, et cetera. And you will see how to easily code with that. For me, now I have uh, just uh, two more modules to talk about. Uh, here is the, the XTS and then REST AT. Uh, for XTS, this is a module that um, that is uh, that is like like kind of the using what we've already seen, just in the uh, in the area in the uh, in the area of uh, web of the soap based web services. So uh, there is that's based on the standards standards of WS AT and WS BA where WSAT uh, consists con con of the atomic transaction transactions where the all the assets uh, grant all the asset stuff is guaranteed. Uh, the nice thing here is that you can uh, with this bridge the JTA transactions with this uh, web web, uh, web method callback call calls over the different services uh, while the and then this uh, business activity uh, business activity part is based on the saga processing that's uh, kind of similar that uh, we've uh, just talked uh, now about LRA but again just based on the soap based web services um, going okay just no I need to find out the right place this is the code of the um, quick start, uh, Narena quick start, just showing kind of uh, the, the here the processing of the XTS. This is the code that lands on one uh, one application server. Uh, we can see there is started a JTA transaction with uh, use transaction begin that could be done so well with um, some annotations, and then there are the calls to the different servers. Uh, with uh, like oh, sorry, um, as, uh, uh, which is like definitions of the yeah, client calls to the other server, which is this endpoint for for web, web service, and the the service itself, uh, which uh, stays on the other server, is. Uh, Annotated with the with the with the with the EJB annotations that expect the the transaction is already started when it's called. This is done uh, again transparently in the background by uh, web method is uh, gathering the the transaction context from the other uh, from the other uh, machine and now uh, resume it here uh, and then the web method is then called in that context and all the work done on both servers are joined together under one uh, under one transaction. Uh, yeah, right. Okay, yeah. So uh, as said, uh, XTS transactions are the uh, so based uh, so based transactions uh, which are goes into flavors, uh, either uh, 
atomic transaction or the saga based approach as uh, name as uh, business activities with that i have the last thing here uh, where i which is uh, rest at uh, transactions atomic transactions for uh, over uh, restful web services that's similar to what i shown with the web uh, web service uh, for so so based managed web services so i i don't have any uh, code with me right now prepared so if you are, you, you are uh, interested in the in uh, uh, then check check in details in the Narana site or in uh, our quick starts uh, where you can find out and then you can reach us on the on the forum or uh, also uh, to, to talk uh, if there are some uh, issues so and with that uh, we are at the end of our journey through the uh, Narana, Narana world of transactions uh, I hope that you find out uh, in you get some interesting uh, I, overview of you get a, an overview of what Narana modules are capable if you will be interested you can check the the quick start of narana where the, a lot of code are in more extensible than what i was showing or you can just check the simple examples that i was showing on my on my, on my github uh, 